ballroom dance as a whole is not diverse. And so even showing that to a little black girl who's at home watching TV, that it is possible to be on a show, to choreograph, to dance, it means everything. Thank you so much, Britt, for taking the time to speak with popculture.com today. How are you? Absolutely. I'm doing really great. Thank you for having me. Of course. And before we get into your monumental um, participation in Dancing with the Stars, I just want to go back a little bit to, um, you know, speak about your amazing, prolific dance career. Um, I followed you for a while. I I'm a trained dancer myself. So I'm always like looking in the background for like the dancers that stand out. And you've always done that. And you performed alongside some major heavy hitters throughout your career. Um, who has been your favorite and why? Oh, well, definitely. First of all, thank you. You're so hello, fellow dancer. I feel like dancers, we always get each other. We're kindred spirits. Yes. <laughs> We just have this like unspoken bond, I feel like, no matter what. Um, but I would say in my career, definitely Katy Perry is one of the um, most memorable artists just because she is amazing, but I also spent the longest amount of time with her. I was a backup dancer for her for three years for her entire Prismatic album. And mm-hmm. so we did like the promo tour and we did the world tour. And then we did, I got to do Super Bowl with her when she performed at the Super Bowl halftime show. And so she was amazing. And then I would say the other one is Janet Jackson. I, there, there are still. You don't really have to explain why. (laughs) She's awesome. And how did your participation in um, Dancing with the Stars come about? Because for people who, um, I know, I've I realized a lot of people, obviously they're like fanatics of the show, but there are also some people who only watch specific seasons contingent upon which stars are participating. So how did your participation in um, the reality dance series come about? Yeah, so, you know, Dancing with the Stars has always had um, like background dancers or way back in the day, they used to have something called um, Macy's Stars of Dance. And so I would pop in as just like a commercial dancer, just like an extra gig from like season to season. And um, I think one of my first times on the show was so long ago, um, probably like over 10 years ago. And I performed with Annie Lennox. Mm -hmm. Um, But then once the choreographer Mandy Moore got involved with the show. She's, I'm from Colorado. She's from Colorado. We've known each other for a really long time. And I worked with her a lot. She would hire me as a dancer on different gigs. And so once she got involved, she really, I owe it to her. It's like she curated, she opened the doors for me to be seen by the producers. And that's how I got my audition. She recommended me for it. She, you know, was able to get me in a certain place where they were able to see me dance. And um, I did my audition and I didn't think I was going to get it. But then six months later, they called me and asked me to be on Troop. And I was, it happened so fast. I was literally like, signing my contract on the way to the first rehearsal. Um, You've made history as the first um, African-American full-time pro pro dance um, competitor on the show. And how has that been monumental? What does that mean to you as far as not just people in the dance world, but also little girls or little boys who are watching the show and they're able to put, you know, a face to a dream that they may not have even dreamed before because prior to you, we didn't really have that representation on the show. Honestly, it means everything to me. I really don't take it lightly. I understand the weight that that carries and the responsibility that that carries as well. And I, as soon as I got the role of being a pro, I knew that that was going to come with it. And so I think it's so important. I think, you know, dance as a community, as a culture, it is, it's diverse, especially in black and brown cultures, dance runs, it runs through our veins. Mm. So it's prevalent, but where diversity lacks is in certain positions in the dance community, like a pro position on Dancing with the Stars or like a top producer or whatever it is. Um, And so even in the ballroom community as well, ballroom dance as a whole is not diverse. And so even showing that, 
to a little black girl who's at home watching TV, that it is possible to be on a show, to choreograph, to dance. It means everything. And it has really, not only does it mean so much to me for Dancing with the Stars, but it's also seeped into just how I'm living my life and what I'm choosing to do with my personal mission. I, um, myself and an amazing group of people started a nonprofit organization called Share the Movement. And our whole mission is to increase diversity in the professional dance community. Um, And through representation and through exclusivity and inclusivity and opportunity, we want to be able to support young BIPOC kids so that we can make their dreams come true. And I love the fact that um, you mentioned your nonprofit organization, because um, that's something that I definitely want to give you kudos to, Um, not just in the in the dance realm, because like you mentioned ballroom specifically, but anyone who knows anything about dance or um, is a fan of dance, specifically like classically classically trained dancers, we know that there's a lack of representation there, like on the stage and, you know, who's chosen to be lead performers. Um, you know, African American female body types are not always necessarily the ideal standard for genres such as classical ballet. Yeah. For a lot of us, it wasn't until we saw a Misty Copeland, you know, make it to the heights that that she has that we're like, okay, well, maybe this is possible for the next generation. But something that you mentioned specifically is ballroom dance. And I think that the difference between ballroom dance and something like, I don't know, modern jazz or um, classical ballet is that ballroom dance is a lot more expensive um, to, that's an expensive undertaking. So I can recall, you know, being in dance classes and, you know, I'm taking five, six dance classes a week and my mom is paying, you know, hundred, two hundred dollars a month. And I go to her and I say, well, I really want to get into ballroom dance. And we, you know, we go and we take like this free introduction lesson. And then the instructor comes back and it's like a thousand dollars a month. And my mom is like, oh no, like this is not, I'm sorry, I don't know what to tell you. So the fact that you're be, that you're that you saw that void and that you're um, doing something to fill it has, is definitely um, admirable. And especially because ballroom dance opens up another worldview for not just dancers, but you know our community as a whole. It gives them um, different opportunities. So what has the response been to students who you have been able to? Um, you know, four way into your program, how have they been receptive to it? Oh, it's been amazing. We're so surprised on everything that has unfolded since we launched because we only launched in April. Mm -hmm. And by the way, our organization is very 2020. We have never had an in-person board meeting. Everything has happened over Zoom, which is insane. We kind of, half of us are on the West Coast and the other half are Mm -hmm. on the East Coast. But when we launched, we just put it out there. And just, this is our mission. This is, and we had so many people come to us. We were able to all off of donations, like personal donations. We were able to fund 17 kids to their preferred um, summer dance programs. And then on top of that, we were able to offer the kids that we weren't able to scholarship free summer dance classes with a program called CLI, which is an online platform dance program. Mm -hmm. And so any kid that applied for our scholarship, they were able to receive something um, to extend their dance training this summer. And um, we had an end of the year Zoom with a few of our scholarship recipients. And we all just got brought to tears because until you talk to a child that lacked opportunity or lacked the financial abundance or whatever it is, you don't you know, it's there, but until you actually speak to them, you don't under, you can't really like understand. Mm -hmm. And then when you have a little girl from the Philippines, there's one child from the Philippines um, that we were able to um, fund her summer dance program. And she had completely lost hope of dance and continuing to dance. And she just got emotional and started crying. And then of course, we all got emotional and then we all were like, this is why we are doing what we're doing. And, um, and even beyond the financial aspect of it, we, we want to take, we have an amazing share the movement community who are that representation. They are 
a direct reflection of the kids that we want to walk alongside their dance journeys. And um, we hope to start a mentorship program and then also educate about dance history too. What's interesting is about ballroom dance. A lot of the dancers are rooted in black and brown culture, but the community as a whole has no diversity. And so how can we bridge that gap of also educating, but then making the community much more colorful? I love that. And um, another thing that I really wanted to touch on is the fact that the world of dance has changed so much. Um, I remember when I was growing up, like my only dream was to be like Beyonce's background dancer, because at that time, like background dancers and music videos and like touring was was the big thing. Um, Not that, you know, Broadway and everything, that's always there. And, you know, going with like, the Alvin Ailey company, that, that was always an option, but it had uh, the transition, it had, it had made a transition. And now we don't really have music videos and Broadway stopped for a year and a half, you know, courtesy of the coronavirus pandemic, unfortunately. But then there's also been, you know, some new segues with online classes and, you know, the digital world and people creating opportunities on YouTube. So what is it that you miss about the way things were And what do you appreciate about where we are now? I'll say this, what I miss about how things were, I, cause I was that girl. I was like, I want to be on TV. I always had me and my best friend growing up middle school through high school. We always knew I was going to move to LA and be on TV and do, you know, film and backup dancing. And then she was going to move to New York and do Alvin Ailey. And she ended up being in Bill T. Jones company. And she's amazing. She still lives in New York. We still talk and we're like, this is hilarious. All these years later, we're still living out our dreams. But I remember being that little girl and saying, that is what I want to do. And I don't think you get to see that so much. I see the next generation of dancers, not that they're necessarily lost, but they don't really know what path to take because everything is so accessible and there's not a direct route Mm -hmm. of how to become a professional dancer. And to... I think these days, a lot of people consider themselves professional dancers because they've gotten social media famous or whatever it is, or that, you know, instant gratification. And so I think that has an effect and I think I miss that. But what's so amazing about the digital world is that you're not necessarily confined to just one path. So even though I'm saying, you know, it's kind of making things confusing, it's also amazing because it makes being a dancer really accessible. It makes being successful really accessible. And it just makes your dreams and everything that you want to do feel more limitless, I would say. And the final thing that I want to touch on is um, you really advocating for um, not just health overall, but specifically dance health. And you know, for dancers specifically, obviously it's important to, for every anyone to be healthy, but for dancers specifically, your body is your instrument. It's your main tool. It's it you know it's what you, it's what you use to do your job. And um, you've been open about some of the health issues that you you know come across and having to make certain lifestyle changes. So you can kind of touch on you know the health issues that you endured and how you've been able to combat that and how you're advocating you know for others to not 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 necessarily make mistakes that you made because you don't know until you know especially something health-wise um if it's like a genetic thing or an autoimmune thing um but obviously you you've done something to kind of turn that around yeah you're right i not only is health and dance health specifically body health really important to me but i also kind of geek out on it (laughs) because i just find it so interesting and so i would say the biggest things for me are Um, starting with self-love, I think as a teenager and coming into my own, I think I made some choices when I was much younger, all out of insecurity and not liking my body and not liking the way that I, that God made me. And, um, I think those along with, yes, some genetics and autoimmune that had an effect on my health. And I had to really shift my perspective. And um, thank goodness my mom and my dad had already really introduced me into the world of homeopathic medicine. So I was able to go down the route, the natural route and do lifestyle changes like my diet, 
mostly, it was mostly my diet Mm -hmm. and even spiritually too. I believe it's all a balance, um, you know, being in tune with your body, listening to what your body needs, but then also making sure that you're mentally healthy as well. Like meditating, praying, I go to therapy. It's like an all inclusive whole body health experience that I'm really passionate about. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out to speak with me today. This has been very fun. It's such an interesting and (sighs) revealing conversation. So I look forward to continuing to watch you on Dancing with the Stars. And I'll definitely be following more on what you do over with the organization. And pop culture over here, we're always a fan. Ah, thank you so much. It was so good to talk to you.